Amen. So the more I've thought about it, the more this election gives me some small degree of hope. I've got some small degree of hope about this election, uh, and, I, and I have to admit I didn't initially. <laughs> have a small degree of hope about this election because I was I was very 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 depressed to begin with uh, it it threw me off my feet I'll be honest with you I had to I had to quit listening to talk radio for a while I, I listened to a lot of NPR because I drive a lot for my job so I listened to NPR in the morning then I sw switched to Rush and then I go back to NPR depending on how much Sean Hannity holds my attention I had to turn it all off the only thing I could listen to was Rush because uh, I was I, I was sideways with this thing because they stole it. They straight up stole it, uh, and I mean they didn't even they didn't even try to hide stealing it, or maybe they did try to hide stealing it, but then they had this. The, God, anyway, they straight up stole it, and any no, you'll never convince me they didn't steal it. They stole it. Uh, just a few things why they think this is not this is not why I think they stole the election, but just a few things. Uh, there were like 34,000 people, 24,000 people in Georgia who voted in the primary who didn't vote. Republicans. There were like 24 or 34,000 Republicans who voted in the primary who didn't vote in the general. That's unheard of. That that right there alone tells me there was something crazy going on, uh, and uh, something just absolutely insane going on. And that's one of the claims the uh, those lawyers are making that that they were deleting Trump votes. And to me, that is strong circumstantial evidence that if you're going to go out of your way, uh, these are people who voted by by mail, absentee vote in the primary who didn't vote at all in the general. That's, that's psychotic. That, 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 anyway, that's not what this is about. Why, why am I... Hey, you're okay. Stop. It's okay. Why am I hopeful? All right. First off, they had to steal this election. Think about it. With all the headwinds we had going, this, this crazy, crazy, crazy virus, virus, uh, that all these shutdowns, what they managed to do to the economy, with the media, 100% on board for Biden and uh, impeachment, the Russia hoax, all this stuff they threw at this election and they still had to steal it. Think about that for just a minute. They had every advantage in the world. This, you could not have a better environment for an opposition party than, you, than they had tried to create this year. Think about it. Impeachment, uh, the, the, the Access Hollywood tapes, I mean on and on and on and on and on and on and on. A, a steady drumbeat for four years uh, and then they they cooked up this virus and they tanked the economy and on and on and on and on it went they could not have had a better environment and they still had to steal it and they still barely won I mean barely like this much they barely won and they and they showed themselves for what they are and barely won to, to begin with lost house in the seats didn't get the Senate uh, psychotic 2022 is going to be an interesting year. Anyway, there's a few other things that made me hopeful. Uh, Latino men broke hard, maybe not broke hard, uh, conservative. I don't say conservative. That, that, that word doesn't mean much anymore. Uh, but they broke hard for Trump, let's say that. Uh, and, and that was very, 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 very encouraging. Uh, you know, the, the whole thing about the illegal immigration all these years, is that the Democrats were going to import all these voters that were going to be reliably Democrat voters and, and a conservative voice could never win ever again. And, and the, the results this year in, in Hispanics, they don't like the term Latino, I've, I've just found recently, or most of them prefer the word Hispanic. The results among Hispanics was very <laughs> encouraging. Working Hispanic men broke hard right. Uh, maybe not hard right, but at, at surprising levels. And, and to that same uh, point, African-American men, working African-American men, uh, uh, showed uh, they voted much more for the right than they ever have in the past before. That is incredibly encouraging, and it shows us there's a path forward uh, with conservatism just doesn't have to be a, a white-only ideology. That is extremely encouraging. Uh, that should make all of us sit up and take notice. Uh, the... Uh, there's, there's hope going forward. Uh, the other thing uh, that, that really was encouraging was that they lost houses in the seats and the Democrats came away from this election thinking that, that radical leftism had failed, that they had lost because of radical leftism. Uh, now, they don't realize that they're all radical leftists, but uh, 
you know, they, they, they think the radical agenda is what cost them the Senate and seats in the House. Uh, and so they're, they're shying desperately away from it. There's something else that is really, really, really encouraging right now. The Democrats are ancient. You look at their people, their, their leaders, you know, Pelosi, uh, <laughs> I know how Pelosi's standing up straight. You know, Schumer is old, uh, uh, Nadler is old, Biden is, you know, he's not, he might not make it a year. Of course, none of us thought he'd make it through a debate either, and he did, so, I mean, but still, even, all these people are really, really old, and who's on their bench to come up? No one, really. They've got Newsom and Cuomo, but both of those guys have really hard, they re have really hard problems inside their own party. They're white guys. They're old white guys. And that's not the future of the Democratic Party. At least that's not the future the Democratic Party sees for themselves. They're going to have a real hard time in their primary. After that, you've got who? Bernie Sanders is out. You know, Pete Buttigieg. The, the, look at the Pete Buttigieg thing. Uh, if you don't know who Pete Buttigieg was, he was the mayor of South Bend, Indiana. And he made a, a serious semi sort of, you know, he, he was in the conversation for the Democratic presidential nomination this year. The mayor of a city that was, it was like 150,000 people in that city. And he was in the conversation for the presidential nomination for the Democrats. They've got no bench. You know, after this, with Biden gone, uh, Pelosi's got, you know, supposedly Pelosi's only got two more years, she says, or only more two more years as the speaker. Pelosi's looking at retirement. Maxine Waters is a corpse. You know, all, all these people that are the, the foundation of the, the Democrats and therefore liberalism's power in America are ancient and they're all gonna be gone soon. And, and the Democratic Party is going to be gutted from within of leadership and uh, nationwide leaders. You, you saw one of my other reasons for being optimistic here just a minute ago. One of my sons, well, you might have even seen more than one, I don't know. Maybe two of them came by. There's a third one hiding over there. Uh, who's having kids right now, man? It's us. You know, lesbian, transgendered penguins don't have kids. We have kids. And if we raise our kids with our values, uh, and, and we bring over even 25% of the Hispanic vote, and we make inroads with the African-American vote, there is a bright future ahead for conservatism in this country. I'll be honest with you, right after the election, I was ready, I was ready to go to war. I mean, I was literally having conversations with myself, is this time, is it, is, is this time to stand up? Have we gone too far? Uh, you know, and the truth of the matter is, it was time to stand up in 1917, uh, but if we haven't stood up yet, now, now maybe is the time to keep getting strong, keep preparing, keep organizing, you know, keep moving forward. Uh, but, but there are reasons for optimism in front of us. We see the failures of liberalism all around us. California, you know, people are fleeing California in droves. People are fleeing New York in droves. It's about to get even worse in those areas. Chicago is, is a hellhole. Uh, we're seeing the implosion of liberalism. And, and there is a path forward for us. I admit, four more years of Trump would have been transformative. Would have been transformative. It was, would have been the best possible thing. And I, I understand there's still a path forward. Uh, I'd love to see it. You know, I'd be happy to go out to the barricades and make it happen. Uh, but even if we don't achieve that, there's reason for hope and optimism. And, and we don't have to, to throw it all away yet and, and buckle on our sword and go to war. Uh, men, we appreciate you. Thank you. <laughs>